Do you remember what helped you get past that initial stage of like, oh my god, I can't speak English? Anyway, well, semester after that, I went to Hawaii to go to boarding school, and there's very few Taiwanese students. And we had an upperclassman, Xue Zhang, put his foot down and was like, none of us are going to speak Mandarin. It's English only here. We're in America. You're learning English. It's English only. And we didn't challenge him because I think we wanted to learn as well. And so I think those two years, like, my English got really good because we just were not allowed to speak it. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to our show today. My name is John Drummond, or Yang Haowen. Hello, 大家好，欢迎各位再度来到 Angie 英文。我是 Angela. We have a great episode for you today with my good friend Emily, who is known around the professional and Taiwanese community as Emily Y Wu. 对啊，今天我们邀请到的来宾是 Ghost Island Media 鬼岛之音的共同创办人 Emily. My guest today is Taiwanese, and she is the co-founder of an incredible production agency here in Taiwan called Ghost Island Media. She is a lover of people, podcasts, being productive, and so much more. So, everyone, please welcome Emily. Hello. Good to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. What's up, Em? So you are an incredibly talented human being. Too kind. <laughs> I wish.、Uh, I wish I really knew the full extent of everything you do. But if you could give us a little taste of, yeah, what are you doing? Who is Emily? Okay. So recently,、um, I'm known as co-founder of Ghost Island Media, which is a podcast network based in Taipei. We do shows in English and Mandarin. They're not bilingual.、Uh, it's either or. So right now we have eight shows. Topics range from environmental. We have a climate show. We have a show on cannabis, Taiwan current affairs, diplomacy, and so on. And there's a lot more that we'll, you know, hopefully by the time that this is released, we'll ha- maybe have a new show. That's incredible, and so yes, as co-founder of Ghost Island Media, what is actually your role within that? I mean, are you trying to bring on new shows? Are you trying to have a hand in certain shows? Tell us a little bit about that world. Yeah, it's a little bit of everything. So when we first started, it was very simple. It was just producing one show, working with one host, producing one show, figuring out how to get that one show onto the platform, and then how to tell everybody about it. And then so you can imagine. Multiply that. So every day, my co-founder and I, Kathy and I, we we develop. We're constantly developing new shows. That's looking for new hosts or working with more existing hosts. For example, Zoe of、uh, Zoe Lee, a lawyer,、um, she hosts our cannabis show, Da Ma Fan Bu Fan. So she launched a different show with us. And so you know, we work with all kinds of hosts, and then、uh, developing all the time,、um, looking for new talents. And once we're done with the show, we then hand it off to a producer. Who developed with us, and then we go on to move to work on new shows. It's, it's really fun. We're always constantly looking for new ideas and seeing it fruitation or not. A lot of shows get killed, unfortunately. They don't make it through like episode one, two, or three, and then they never see the light of day. Yeah, yeah, and that's it's just so incredible because I can't imagine how busy you are with that. As you're kind of developing all these like pilots, essentially,、yes. right? Of a sh- pilots of shows. And then hope trying to nurture them to come up, and then seeing where they can blossom into. Yeah, but then also with existing shows, then it's launching new seasons, new directions, like shaping the new yeah new seasons and directions. Yeah, and it's it's so so cool. And your name has echoed really in this space as really a I don't want to say a pioneer, but you are you are seen as kind of the. I'm loud. I'm very loud. <laughs> loud and proud. <laughs> I I wouldn't I would like to say it in a much <laughs> kinder way. If you are just paving the way for a lot of people coming up right now in the podcasting world, no, it's true. I I, I had to be loud because like there's something you love. You want to tell the world about it. You want to get everybody in on it with you, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and well, well done because that makes you an incredible co-founder. As you can, that helps with marketing and and fundraising, maybe and investing, yada yada yada. Yeah, I know we got really lucky. I think we got in the time when the Taiwanese、um, podcasting scene was really starting to blossom, and so along with us, there's there's. People who are working on tech, there's people working on the ad side, the people working on the community side and the platform side,、um, and so it's been a really, really interesting ride with the rest of the community here in Taiwan. Yeah, yeah, and so so cool. How long have you guys been doing Ghost Island now? Two and a half, two and a half years. Yeah, okay, that sounds about right. Yeah, this this show has has just hit two years in a few、mm-hmm. months now. 
So I remember. Congrats. Like, yeah, thank you. Thank you. But yeah, I remember hearing like your name. I was like, who's this Emily? What is this Ghost Island Media? And, and now, so I'm so happy to kind of come full circle and have you on the show. So can you take us through maybe what it was the, the journey like with the first show, creating that, that OG show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, really fun. Um, so it's a show called Waste Not, Why Not? It, uh, there's been different versions of that show. It's a show that keeps growing because we use, we get to really experiment a lot with it. So that show came about when, at the time, I wasn't living in Taiwan. So, so background, I'm from Taiwan. I was born in Taiwan. I grew up in Taiwan. Then I went to the States, middle school, high school, college. I stayed in the States. I came back for eight years. And I left again, this time, only to Asia. It was Beijing, Hong Kong, Shanghai. I stayed in Asia. So it was during that time, I was trying to come back from Asia to back to Taiwan again. I decided I want to do podcasting. So I came from documentaries, I do news, uh, animations, all kinds of production as a producer and writer, corporate filmmaking even. And it kind of got in my head that I want to do podcasting because I love listening to podcasts. There should be more podcasts. Why isn't there any? So I want to do it. So I'm looking for a host. I'm going around Taipei. I'm telling my friends, this is what I'm going to do. And somebody said, oh, you should meet this guy. He's looking for a producer. So he's an American who's a uh, environmental researcher based in Taiwan. So he's somebody who really knew both spaces. And environment content was something that I knew a bit about um, back in when I was doing documentaries and also corporate filmmaking. There was a lot of projects with environment. So that I felt like that was something I knew how to work with. So so now I have, I have this former Fulbright who's a researcher at a think tank, incredibly smart, very charming. And so now we're trying to figure out how to do a podcast together. And so it took a lot of back and forth. It took a lot of rewrites, like first figuring it out, all right, what do you want to say about the environment? And, you know, he has his spiel, how he wanted to change the world, how he wants to make people think. And I have this, okay, if this is what you want to do, let's package it this way. Let's talk. Let's tell it this way. Let's script it this way. And let's record it and, and get it out. And we test a lot. We test it with, if it's just Nate, so the name's Nate, Nate Maynard. If it's just Nate talking, what does that sound like? If uh, we introduce a voice, let's get a quotation. Let's go out on the field and interview somebody. So our first interviewer was at Ucha Cha with Mai Bach from Ucha Cha. Incredibly. She was, she was, she was awesome. We actually worked out of Ucha Cha a lot in those early days. Um, she was our first interviewer. And then we thought, okay, let's package together. What does planet money sound like? We want to make planet money. So then we studied planet money a whole tons and try to make something like that. And then, you know, we talked to somebody who gave her, who gave us our first full length interview, somebody from Gogoro. He was the head engineer of battery systems at Gogoro. It was a great interview. That interview took me about maybe five days to edit. It was 24 pages because at the time we didn't, we, we never done anything like that. So I'd printed everything out and all of 25 pages out. And literally I, I spread it across in a giant table and like how you would do copy and edit, I'm shuffling paper around. Um, a lot of trial and error. Nate, when he did his Fulbright research in Taiwan, it was on uh, corals in Kanding. This guy loves corals. Nice. For good reasons, yeah. But that episode, it took three rewrites and three re-records, which is kept rewriting because it turned out the more you know about something, it doesn't make it easier to talk about because he knew so much. Then it was about, okay, what do we, like... A lot of it wasn't digestible to the audience. Mm -hmm. And so it was a lot of figuring out how do you work with the host? Also for the host, how do you speak in a way that makes it understandable to your audience? That is just incredible. I was thinking about that whole kind of unfolding and just, yeah, you just, I love seeing your business mind right there at work. It's just like, how can we package this? How can we target this certain audience? You know, how can we make this digestible? So, so incredible. And, and that show now it did pretty well, right? And you've you've reworked it, but it's, it did you feel it was um, the correct path that you took with it? Oh, we've made incredible progress with that show. That show, uh, right soon after it was launched, we were invited to the states uh, to attend a science conference. It was a conference called the AAAS, American Association for the Advancement of Science. Um, they are the association that publishes Science, the magazine. Um, so Bill Bill Gates was the headliner that year. This is right before COVID. So we got to meet other science shows. Economist was there. Discovery was there. Um, I, I, we, we were the only ones from Asia, but it was, uh, it was, it was really nice to be talking to other science shows because that show is about the world. It happens to be produced in Taiwan, and sometimes we'll talk about Taiwan, but it's not a show about Taiwan. So it was really important for us to be there and meet other people, other science shows. So that was totally incredible. And then that show later on, 
um, won a recognition from a uh, what's called a Citra Fund in in Finland as the global as a global circular economy solution um, and things like that. Incredible, yeah. yeah! Congratulations to that too. Yeah, like, yeah that's, thank you. to get that recognition too is probably like a nice kind of validation for hey, you know what? We did this the right way. We didn't just jump into it right away. We we took our time. We found the right approach. And, and it was a lot of testing. I think if you listen to that show, um, a lot of episodes sound different because we we sometimes will use it as a mini test. So for example, there was one episode where we used like a movie opening, like movie trailer opening, just to just to make it slightly more fun to yeah. see what happens when you do that. So we get. To to really use that to kind of experiment different styles of doing things, and then when something works, we then say, "Okay, how do we apply that to other shows?" 访谈的一开始这边 ，Emily 提到他们 podcast 播客节目的工作内容和一些节目主题，好像是跟环境、气候相关的啦，或者是像外交关系、啊台湾时事等等，甚至是探讨大麻的议题也都有。而且中文和英文两种语言的节目都有做哦，非常适合想要做音听训练的听众朋友。那刚才这段这边他们讲到整个节目制作过程的时候 ，Emily 用到这个片语 “see the light of day”。好，字面上像是在讲说见天日或是看见光明之类的，其实呢就是在表达问世播出这样子。所以刚才那一句 “they never see the light of day”。意思就是说，有些节目主题可能前三集撑不过，就会被终止、被喊卡停播，好，就永远不会问世，不会被世人所见，呃，所听这样。那另外一个是 John 提到的 pilot， 好，他在这里指的不是一般我们熟悉的飞行员哦，而是节目试播的意思。因为 pilot 它这个字呢，其实本身就也带有引领或是尝试的意涵在。那常常一个新节目的前一两集试播，我们就可以叫做 pilot， 因为他们可以用这样的方式来看收视率或是收听率好不好，再决定说要不要继续往下做。或者是例如我们出去玩露营要生活的时候啊，用的那些小火苗，就也可以叫做 pilot。再来 ，Emily 分享到，她是在台湾出生长大，后来才搬去美国念国中、高中、大学。那之前其实本来有搬回来台湾一阵子，但大概八年左右之后又，又又再度离开到亚洲其他地方工作。那就在她又要再度搬回来台湾的时候，某天突然灵光一闪，吼，决定要在她最爱听的 Podcast 播客节目圈里面参一咖，要来做自己的节目。所以不久之后呢，在幸运之神的眷顾之下，就认识了目前住在台湾的美国环境研究员马奈德。那因为他本来就也在找做他环境议题的节目制作人，所以两个就很刚好就开始了往后的合作之路，甚至一度呢还邀请到 g o g o r o 的大咖工程师跟他们做访谈。而且在节目播出之后，因为做的真的太好了，大受好评，好到呢还受邀参加 A A A S 这个美国科学促进会的展览，连 Discovery 频道跟《经济学人》的 Economist 也都有参展。而且因为当中节目有提到台湾，加上他们又是亚洲唯一有参加的，所以整个就是很棒的一个经验。这边有一个字，我们来听一下 ，validation。啊，刚才 John 不是在称赞 Emily 节目做得很好吗？说他们节目做出来之后还受邀去美国参展，这对他们的节目制作来说真的是一种很大的肯定。那我们讲的这个肯定，用英文表达的话呢，就可以说是一种 validation。只是如果你去查字典的话，可能看到的会是批准啊、验证这一类的意思。但如果用在今天这种情况的时候，就变成是在表示认同、认可、肯定这样。那同样跟它一样系列的字，还有 validate 跟 valid。validate 就是刚刚说 validation 的动词，那 valid 是形容词，可以用来表达呃某种资料文件有效、没有过期。好像如果你说啊、呃、，my passport is valid for ten years。就是说，我的护照有效期限是十年，或者也可以用来形容证据确凿、有根据、可以让人相信的，像 a valid reason 就是指正当理由
如果你想要上课的时候跟老师说：“哎，老师，我有正当理由要去干嘛干嘛干嘛。”你就可以说 ：“I have a valid reason for that。”好，好了，那这段内容就先在这里告一段落。我们赶快继续听下半段的分享。And so, thinking about now what you've been working on, you know, what do you want to be focusing on? Let's say twenty twenty two and beyond. That is a big、Uh-oh. question. That that keeps changing. That's、I、so know, hard. Um, <laughs> that's hard because I kind of want it all. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it. Yeah, no, we we、um, earlier this year we launched a documentary podcast, and which then happened to be the first audio doc podcast that came out of Taiwan, and we wanted. Be, we want to see that in a book. We want to see that same podcast as a movie or as a TV. So now we're shopping around, taking to development houses to see like this has potential. How do we make it into something else?、Um, there, we want to be working more with students, with kids. We want to work. I want to do、um, narrative, like、uh, fiction, fiction shows.、Yeah. Um, my co-founder really wants to do a musical. Oh, I love musicals! <laughs> Please do a musical. Yeah, yeah. We want to do interactives.、Um, we want to do interactives, but I think at the time we d- we didn't know how to, and I think we now have more of an idea. I love that, and it's just so great to see kind of all the ways you want to grow and and how excited you like. I can feel your your excitement for it. So I really wish you nothing but success with that. Thank you. And thinking of your own journey with English, especially when you went to America, do you remember any times that you kind of had to over- overcome anything? Or this is a little segment I like to do where it's a、uh, like fun stories about the language struggle, but kind of make it relatable to everyone here. Yeah. Oh, it was really hard.、Um, I didn't speak much. I took like. I think to level six of Joy School in Taipei.、Um, joy English. Joy <laughs> English. <laughs> nice. Yeah,、uh, they gave me the name Emily. Oh my、um, goodness! Oh, the origin story of Emily. <laughs> what、yeah. would be? What is your your Mandarin name? Is is any relation to that? No, not at all. And at the time, I had another English name that I really didn't like because I could make fun of myself with that name. I was like, no, no. So when they asked me, "Do you have a name?" I said, "No, no, no, no." I'm thinking, please give me a new name. Uh, so they gave me,、oh, wow. and I was okay with it.、Um, I tried to change it at some point because、uh, my middle school is in Hawaii, and then I had、uh, Hawaiian friends with really cool names, and I just thought, like, I want to have a really cool name, right? I thought, like, Emily was so what do you call it, Tai Tiamia, like, a, <laughs> yeah, like, like a name you, you you shout Emily at the at the supermarket, and everybody turns around.、Mm-hmm. I'm John. Yeah, I know that.、I'm、right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah.、Um, But I think what made me stuck to the name was I was already starting to paint at the time, and I already signed my name. Right, and I was like, "Well, I don't want to, you know, that's like mean、mm-hmm. if I change my name." I don't know. Anyways, so、uh, yeah, but then it was tough. It was tough. I there was a period. I think I I had very little memory because I probably didn't speak a lot at the time. A few friends. There was a Korean friend and a friend from Nepal who were incredibly nice. This was it in Ann Arbor, at Michigan at the time, so it was a huge university town. So I think there. So there's a lot of international students who are kind of kits of you know professors or, or PhD、uh, candidates. Yeah, I didn't speak much.、Um, probably got made fun of a lot, and I probably didn't understand when they were when I was being made fun of because you just had no idea.、Um, so yeah, that is a long way to say when I went to the states, my confidence level was shot. Down, it was bad. It was really bad, and it took a long time to kind of build it back up. Um, because all just you didn't know how to speak. I think that's, and I think to a teenager, that's a very, very big shock. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. And what were some of the steps that you actually had to to build that confidence back up? I think that's actually that's, that's something really important here. Is what what helped you rebuild that confidence? Because look at you now, you're so confident. You have such an ability to speak. Do you remember anything that helped along the way? I think soon after that in Hawaii there was very few Taiwanese students, and we had a Xue、uh, Zhang, a, mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. upperclassman, Upper class,、yeah. who、uh, who kind of was like, none of us were going to speak Taiwanese or Mandarin. Here we speak English only, right? So like we're like, okay, <laughs> sure, I'll listen to the Xue Zhang because I'm eleven. What do I know? Um, and so during those two years, I think. All of our English got really, really good because we just didn't speak any Mandarin, and I think I eventually I got pretty good grasp of it, but I didn't think I did. So I remember telling my eighth grade English teacher I wanted to drop down to ESL. I was in regular English. This is after just 
one and a half years of being in the States. And she was like, no way. She was like, you're getting a B plus in my class. You are not dropping the ESL. And I, I didn't understand what that meant at the time. Um, so I think that was really crucial. The fact that she kept me in regular English. But then, you know, that would have a whole different implication now in high school where like, then it was a rejection of like, oh, I don't know how to exist in Mandarin and English. Can I? Can Like socially, is that acceptable? Can you have Taiwanese friends and speaking in Mandarin only at a cafeteria but at the same time still do your American thing? So it took me a long time to reconciliate the two. And then eventually I think it was a, again, it was an upper class woman, this uh, Lisa, this woman from Japan. I saw how she swung that beautifully. And I was like, oh, wait, you could do that. Let's try doing that. Cool. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. Where in Hawaii? Uh, Hawaii was on the big island, okay. but high school was in Massachusetts. Okay, right, right, right. Awesome, Emily. Well, thank you for making time out of your crazy life to come join us on NG Ing Wen. Thank and you for having me. It's been really fun. Yeah, awesome. You know, you're just it's so great to see you kind of shining and you really you really do glow in in real life with all the things you're doing and the way you talk about life. So, you're so nice. Much much <laughs> much respect and uh thank you for for joining us. But a question I'd love to end the show with is if you could go back and talk to a younger Emily pre your English Emily name, <laughs> would there be any advice you give yourself about language, life, business, anything? I'm not a, um, I don't tend to have big regrets, but I do often think back to, oh, I wish I did more of that. So can I start doing more of that now? Um, I think it always goes back. It's the same. I think whatever age is, I wish I was a little bit bolder. I wish I knew how to speak up more. Um, I wish I read more. Those three. Yeah, yeah, and I love that. I mean, it's so concise. It's you're such an entrepreneur with that. Like, yeah, I got three things. Here they are, and here's how I'm actually tackling it all three right now. <laughs> I love that. I'm not. I haven't read a book in so long. Ever no? since Go Silently Media started, like, no, no, no. Before I came back, I was on a really good track. I read so much uh, the last like three years, and then Go Silently Media started, and I am barely finishing a book. I, I listen to books now. I was about to say, I mean, and technically with podcasting, I feel like you are consuming, that you're still, it's so knowledge-based with especially a lot of the shows you're producing, right? It is, but I find like, I guess when I talk about books, I mean fiction books, mm-hmm. that kind of, mm-hmm. you know, you can get lost in that in yeah. that in that world and then expand your perspective a little bit, right? Like, yeah, I, I listen to a lot of nonfiction. I listen to a lot of podcasts, um, but I wish I read more classics and fiction. Got it, got it. Yeah, the fiction journey. I am just starting to dive more into fiction. Yeah. I've always been a nonfiction guy, and fiction is incredible. Yeah, yes. yeah. Yes. My, my, I miss it. I need to. I need to do that. Oh my more goodness. of that. Have you read any of um, Andy Weir's books? A good place if you like any of that stuff. Um, the Martian, you okay. might have seen the movie, but yeah, his yeah. new book, uh, it's called Hail Mary. It's great if you okay. want just like a fun little science adventure. But, great, uh, I'll check it out. Awesome. Well, where can people find you? Where can they listen to shows that you're producing? Where can they find you on the World Wide Web? Yes, we are everywhere. <laughs> um, if you are a podcast listener, um, search Ghost Island Media, Guido Jean in any of the podcast apps, Apple, Spotify, Google, uh, Pandora, Amazon, and anywhere. Um, if you are on Facebook, it's Ghost Island Media or also my my page, Emily Y Wu, Emily Y Wu dot M E dot M E me. Twitter, Emily Y Wu, Instagram, Emily dot Y dot Wu. Somebody took the Emily Y Wu a long time uh, ago. <laughs> handle names. <laughs> yeah, look us up everywhere we're on you're on all the platforms. Emily Y Wu. Yes. There it is. Thank you so much. Awesome. This has been really, really fun. Thank you for joining us and we will talk to you very, very soon. Yes. 节目下半段一开始这里 Emily提到说 他们除了做了全台湾第一个以播客形式呈现的纪录片 这个documentary以外呢 未来也希望可以请学生请小朋友到节目上来一起参与做一个讲故事的系列甚至音乐剧未来也都有可能会在他们节目中出现所以大家敬请期待如果还没发到他们消息的听众朋友待会节目过后可以去研究一下哦再来Emily分享到说她在搬去美国之前 
你的名字里面有荣，念起来跟 Angela 的那个 z 很像，不然你就叫做 Angela 好了。<笑>虽然好像，呃，也没有必要特地还取一个英文名字来上英文课，念本来中文名字的英文拼音其实也就可以啦。但它也是跟了我快三十年，默默的就变成我的另外一个名字。大家听众朋友，你们也有被老师取英文名字的有趣经验吗？可以在底下留言跟我们分享哦。这边我们听一个片语 ，at some point。好，它在不同情况下可以用来表达曾经、一度或者是未来的某个时候。好像刚才来宾讲到说 ，at some point I tried to change my name。就是在讲说，他小时候因为觉得同学名字怎么那么酷啊，我的就那么怂吼、哦，蔡佳敏一度呢非常的想要改名。那这边的一度就是我们说的 at some point。那如果是像这句 I don't want to have a baby now, but I know I will want one at some point， 就是说现阶段呢我不想要生小孩，但是未来我会想要一个。好，它这用法不是去说明未来的一个确切的时间点，但就是指未来的某个时候。一个跟它很类似的片语是 at one point。好，它也可以用来表示曾经啊、一度，但是它就仅此而已，它只能用来叙述过去的时间点，没有未来的意涵哦。好，言归正传，后来呵呵来宾他跟家人先后搬到了夏威夷跟密西根。Hawaii and Michigan. 好，但他说可能因为当时英文懂得不多，都没什么讲话，所以对那阵子的生活几乎都没有什么记忆。尤其对一个正值青春期的小孩来说，听不懂大家在讲什么，呃，没办法跟同年纪的朋友玩啊、聊天什么的，这样对自信心的建立当然是有一定程度的影响。还曾经跟他学校正规英文课的老师说，他没有办法跟美国同学一起上课，想要去跟其他移民一起上第二外语的英文课。幸好当时的老师呢，慧眼识英雄，跟他保证说程度没有问题，绝对可以跟美国当地的同学一起上他们的他们的国语课，他们的就是他们的英文课啊，哈，这才呢慢慢的帮他把自信建立起来。那最后，在 Emily 分享一些他希望以前自己可以做更好的事情的时候，就用了这个字 concise， c o n c i s e， concise 来形容人家。好，就是说，哇， Emily 非常简洁有力，可以做更好的事情，就简单三点，勇敢一点，多发表一点，个人意见多读一点书，这样子，哈、哦，简单扼要。好，希望大家都有从这一次的内容学到一些东西。有兴趣的话呢，哎，找个时间去看看他们这个《鬼岛之音》（Ghost Island Media）， 听听他们的节目吧。All right, bye everyone. Bye. Peace. All right. Well, that is our NG English show for today. We hope everyone enjoyed listening to that. You can connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and now Spotify. You can search NG English. Or you can search on IG NG English I C R T, and don't forget to tune in every Wednesday morning from 6:30 to 7, and Wednesday night from 9 to 9:30. We'll catch you on the next episode. Bye bye. 好啦，今天的节目就到这边告一段落啦。感谢各位的收听，别忘了订阅我们的 Spotify 还有 YouTube 频道哦。那喜欢我们节目的话，也要记得到 Instagram 到 IG 上追踪我们哦。如果各位有什么其他问题是想要问来宾的，也请欢迎在底下留言告诉我们，我们一定会想办法帮你问到手。好啦，那就下周在空中相会喽，拜拜。